Hello again, everybody. It's Guardian Enzo coming to you live from beautiful but very rainy Kyoto, where it's been a rainy season to remember this year. Boy, I'll tell you, it's been probably three weeks and every day rain, and this week, you know, 10 to 12 centimeters of rain a couple times. Uh, the river runs night next to my house, and it's been something like something from a Kevin Bacon Rail Street movie, basically. So it's been crazy. But as soon as the rain stops, it's going to get unbelievably hot and humid every day. So I'm not really complaining about the rain. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm here with kind of a special, uh, a special show today, which is the first time I'm going to combine Enzo Loves Manga with the From the Vault because the series I wanted to talk about today. I can easily fit in either category, and that's Akatsuki no Yona, which is one of my favorite manga and one of my favorite anime. And there aren't that many series, surprisingly few, that I can say that about, but it's a phenomenal manga that got a great adaptation that each of them is, is superb in its own right, but the anime only covers a relatively small portion of the story. So, uh... They're both great and they're both essential independent of each other, which is why I decided to put it in both categories here. Uh, it is certainly a manga I love and it is certainly a from the vault show now too. It, not in the 90s or anything, but it aired way back around 2014, I think. Uh, and uh, I think it aired fall 14 and winter 15. It was a two core anime. The manga started in 2009 and is still running. And uh, the manga is on 36 volumes, and it's by a uh, mangaka named uh, Kusanagi Mizuho, who does both the art and the writing. And um, it has, if if anything, it's gotten better. Uh, it's it's remarkable how good the manga is, how consistently good the manga is. It's an incredibly complicated story with. Uh, incredibly complicated story with really fascinating characters, a great lead, the titular lead, uh, Yona, Princess Yona, Yona of the Dawn, as it was correctly translated into English for a change, Akatsuki no Yona, Yona of the Dawn, but a tremendous supporting cast. Uh, you, It's one of these big epic style series where you'll get arcs that will go for the equivalent of several episodes at a time worth of chapters where it, it will feature a, a one small sporting character, maybe even a new character, a couple of the sporting cast and, and the main character will, will drop out for a while and then she'll be back. Sometimes they work as a group. There's really a main core, which is six people. Uh, sometimes they're together, sometimes they're not, but it works no matter what she does it's, it's she's kusanagi sensei is a tremendous writer she's a tremendous artist too but she's a tremendous writer and no matter which way she takes the story it, it always seems to work and uh that's that's one of the things that's most remarkable about it to me um it, you know this is a shoujo it's a shoujo it's a historical fantasy but it is like the like the greatest like shoujo like shonen you have series which are you know, can be great, but are very, very representative of the genre, of the demographic, I should say, with all the tropes that go on with it. Then you have some in both in both demographics, certainly in shoujo, Chihai Furu is another one that comes to mind, but Akatsuki Niyona is a demographic shattering series. It's not constrained by any particular uh, demographic or even genre tropes. It does its own thing. It's a historical fantasy to be sure, uh, some mythology from various different parts of Asia, but more Korea than anywhere else, which got it into a little trouble at some point with the nationalists, but, you know, fuck them. Um, and it is it is set in what I think I would describe as a pretty loosely fictionalized Korea, but it really could be almost anywhere. The, the point is that the story is phenomenal and so are the characters. And as I said, the main character here is uh, a young woman named Yona, Princess Yona, who's about 16 years old. Uh, although there are some flashbacks where we see her as a younger child. And uh, she has two, she's the daughter of the king. Uh, and uh, she's the daughter of the king of uh, Koka, is the name of the kingdom. 
living a very carefree life. Her father, seemingly a uh, you know a very kind and gentle ruler and father, uh, and she has two dear dear friends, uh, Su Wan and Hack, and they're uh, a little bit older than she is. I think Hack is about three years older, and Su Wan is a year or two older, I believe. But they're all very very close, inseparable. One could even say. Uh, until some event happens that causes Hack and Yona to be separated from Su Wan. And I won't go into too much detail for fear of spoilers if you haven't seen or read it, but it's... Um, thus begins an incredible uh, epic journey for Yona and Hack, and they pick up various allies along the way. Most prominently are uh, the four dragons, who are the mythical... Uh, mythical mythical beasts they're called although for all intents and purposes they're men and they're sort of bonded to her through legend and uh then there's a young healer the tensai bashonin as he calls himself who is yun who is a year or two younger than yona i think a year younger than yona and he joins the group before anybody else does actually he's really the third person to join after yona and hack and he's um He's a tremendous character for me, Yoon. Uh, he's my favorite character in the series, actually, because he does not have any physical superpowers uh, like the dragons and Hack are incredibly tremendous fighters, either magically or just through sheer sheer martial arts ability and strength, or both. Yoon is simply uh, a, young, a young boy who's really smart and incredibly compassionate and has to survive in this incredibly brutal world that these people inhabit strictly based on his character, strength of character and intellect. And he has a very, very strong sense of morals. He's a, he's a pacifist, in, not, in the, uh, not in the kind of dilettante sense, but in the real intellectual sense. He is intellectually, morally, he is a pacifist. And yet he's in a situation where these people have to fight for their lives. Uh, it's fascinating, and he and he and Yona particularly, and Hack too, develop a great, great friendship among them. And uh, he's often called Mother Yoon or Mama Yoon by the readership because he has a he's he's a very mothering person, and he's a caring person. And his ambition is to become a healer, uh, something he started very early in life. And the four dragons, each of them have their own personalities, uh, and they become very important characters. And the Everywhere they go uh, through their various adventures, they they meet interesting people and some enemies, some friends, some frenemies. Uh, the story just gets deeper. The story gets mo more complex, more complicated. Politics, uh, some magic. It's kind of like Seirei no Mira Morbido in the sense that, that the fantasy magic element is important, but it's really politics and the people that mainly drive the story. Uh, I would say Akatsuki Niyona comes closest to me to capturing that majesty of story that um, that the Cesare no Morbido anime especially was able to to capture with Kamiyama Kenji, what he did to to, uh, to really beef up Uihashi's story for the anime version. I think Yona comes probably as close as any series I've ever personally uh, been involved with that that to capturing that same kind of intellectual ethical literary kind of a scope to it the magic as i say the fantasy is important but it's it plays a secondary role to the politics and the people and uh, you know it's all it all really comes down to suwan in a sense who disappears from a central role in the story early as i said but never stops being the dark matter of the story in in a way the one that's always influencing things even when he's not physically present or seemingly physically present and his character is if, if Yun is my favorite character I think Su Wan is the most complex character the most difficult character uh, so it's he's a very divisive character among the fan base too I might point out um, why is this series great well I've given you a bunch of reasons already uh, it's brilliantly written the anime takes you through 24 episodes which Probably, I'm going to guess, maybe gets you through the first third of the manga, roughly. Uh, yeah, I, that sounds about right. I think I think the anime probably takes you through about maybe 
eight volumes, maybe, maybe, maybe there's an OVA series that does some later volume stuff too, so call it 10 volumes if you want, and we're at 36 volumes in the manga. The manga is, um, as I said, still going strong, as good or better than it's ever been. It's one of the highest rated manga on the aggregator site, Baka Updates, which, you know, normally uh, I don't look too much at aggregator scores, but this one is insanely high, especially for a series that does not have any uh, any really tropey or, or commercial hot buttons. It's just strictly based on how good it is that it ranks that high. Um, it, it is beautifully drawn. It's beautifully written. Uh, the story endlessly evolves. It endlessly changes, as do the major characters. Uh, as I say, it is a genre and demographic divide, defying story. It does not get trapped or caught up in the tropes. It does its own thing. Um, it's it's just a great series that I can't recommend highly enough. To which I would do first. Honestly, I read the anime. I, I read the anime. I read the manga after I watched the anime because I kind of knew when it ended that we probably weren't going to get uh, any additional anime. We ended up getting some OVAs, which were wonderful, but there's never going to be a second season of Akatsu Kimiyon. I think it's pretty safe to say. And when I'm at a comfort point with that, like I've never done that with Vinland Saga because Hallelujah season two of that was just announced, but I kind of figured and the director and character designer had been hinting at it so ruthlessly for so long, figured that second season was probably coming. So I held off on reading that manga. This one I read because I knew we weren't going to get uh, another season. Nevertheless, I would start with the anime because it doesn't skip much and it doesn't really spoil much either. Even the OVAs, even though they jump ahead, I think it's okay to even watch the OVAs before you read the manga, although some would disagree with me. Um, it's 24 episodes plus, I think, four episodes in the OVAs. Um, and it's just... It, it's... It's done by Studio Pierrot, which, you know, people will love to knock Studio Pierrot, and not entirely without reason, because, I mean, a lot of their stuff is in the kingdom vein. It's cheap. But they can do pretty high-quality visuals when they really have a budget and when they set themselves to it, and which is exactly what they did with Akatsuki Niyona. To me, it's the finest-looking Pierrot series I've ever seen. Uh, and one thing Pierrot does do, even if their production values are not always off the charts, their, their their adaptation of story tends to be top shelf. They tend to be quite faithful and quite clever in the way they adapt manga, including ongoing manga. And that's something I highly respect about them. Uh, in fact, there was a stretch of time when I did my year-end top 10 list uh, over on, uh, on LA.com, uh, you know, lostinanime.com, that... Pierrot had, they were the only series, in fact, for for a while that was in every one of my top 10 lists. Uh, not Madhouse, not Bones, not IG, nobody. It was, it was Pierrot because Pierrot came out with a series, a run of really, really good series year after year. Most of them did not look nearly as good as Yona, but they were all really, really smartly and sensitively adapted. Uh, not religiously faithful. They made changes where they where they could to improve the product for anime to make it a smoother transition, but materially very faithful. So watch the anime first or read the manga first. I'd watch the anime first personally, uh, and then you can jump into the then you can jump into the manga, which will again I think that'll be somewhere around the eighty chapter mark, seventy five eighty chapter mark, something like that. Um, and just read the manga. And uh, I had thought, oh, it's 300 chapters, or it's 200 chapters, whatever it is. It's going to take me forever to catch up with it. I caught up and became current with the manga a lot quicker than I expected, which leads me now to that torture stage of having to wait for new chapters. But the wait is well worth it, believe me. It's a monthly, but the chapters are long. And um, I, it's just a, it's a series like Vinland Saga, like Seren no Morabito, like Dororo. Uh, it's a series that should have something to appeal to anyone who likes good writing, who likes strong characters, uh, who just likes high quality anime and manga, period. If you're a fantasy fan, so much the better because it is a great fantasy as well. And there's romance here too, absolutely. There is romance and it's a very good romance, very realistic in its development. You don't want to short sell that. Uh, and that starts to get a little complicated in the later days in the manga too. Uh, again, 
it's all good. There's just really, I I can't really point to anything with Akatsuki Niyono where I'd say this is where the, the series really struggles. It does not have any major weak points as far as I'm concerned. It does everything well, both as an anime and as a manga, and that's why it's in uh, From the Vault and Enzo Loves Manga. And Enzo loves Akatsuki Niyona. So I hope, uh, I hope if you guys have not given this series a chance, I hope you will. Uh, and there are people I know who are thrown off by sho shoujo say, oh, I don't like shoujo, I don't like shoujo. Well, first of all, get past that. But second of all, you don't have to be a shoujo fan to love Akatsuki Niyona because as I say, it, it's much bigger than demographic. It's much bigger even than genre. Uh, it's a label. That's all it is. And in this case, that's really all it is. So check it out. Hope you enjoy it. And again, as always, uh, I want to thank you very sincerely for tuning in. Uh, you can, of course, uh, check in the description. I'll have the link to uh, some of my Akatsuki Niyoni stuff over at uh, lostinanime.com. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for reading at the site. If you like it, I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll hit the like button. And of course, uh, please, please leave your comments. Uh, I'll do my best to reply to them. And uh, I hope you guys have a great summer. And uh, I hope you. Stay frosty as always. Talk to you soon.